We face so many problems today that people forget how joyful life can be. Are you also struggling to find happiness in this busy world? Well, we have compiled some of Satguru's eye-opening speeches that will lead you to realize that happiness is just right here within you. In this video, Satguru will talk about how you can benefit from controlling your emotions and ignoring negative opinions. He will also explain where you should find motivation, and he will tell you the secret to living a blissful life. So help yourself, look for the peace and happiness that your mind is seeking. Let's now watch the entire video. So, this aspect of life is being dragged into all kinds of things. One fundamental reason is, whether it's our career or our business or our relationships, we are trying to milk happiness out of it. <laughs> the moment you attempt this, you or those your loved ones will slowly turn into your enemies over a period of time because that's how it works. We must understand human experience essentially comes from within us. Whether it's pain or pleasure, it comes from within us. Joy and misery comes from within us. Agony and ecstasy comes from within us. If we understand this, if we take charge of this, if we take charge of the seat of experience within ourselves, what experience would we cause to ourselves? Definitely highest level of pleasantness. So if you being joyful and loving is not enslaved to anybody, you are joyful and loving by your own nature, then every relationship will work well. Whatever sort of relationships you make, everything will work well. Whatever is your career or your business or your activity in the world, you will do it to the best because there is substantial medical and scientific evidence today to show you that only when you're in a pleasant state of experience, your body and your mind will work at their best. For you to succeed on this… in this physical world, this is all it takes, that you must have a few brain cells working properly and <laughs> four limbs to do the things that you have to do. Without getting your body and your brains to function according to your needs, you will not be successful. You will only be successful by sometimes by default or by accident. That is not a good success because that success creates anxiety. It's very important, your success is rooted in your competence, your su su success is figured out in your mind. If this has to happen, it's very, very important that you're in a pleasant state of experience. That is, there may be many problems and issues outside, but you are never the issue in your life. But right now the problem is, in most human beings' lives, their own thoughts, their own emotions are the greatest impediments that they are facing. If you just cross this one thing, you will see every human being will be able to perform to their fullest level, find expression to their fullest level. This is a whole lot of talk in the world about, you know, the head and the heart business, but the way you think is the way you feel. And the way you feel is the way you think. For different people, different things run first. For some people, their thoughts, today largely because of the type of education, for most people their thoughts run ahead of their emotions. But still there is a sizable percentage of people for whom their emotions run ahead of their thought. Now what Sonakshi is asking is, there are situations that you don't wish to be in, but emotions are tangled up. So thought keeps going there, unknowingly you keep walking in the direction. What you need to understand is, thought is agile. Today my thought says she is the most wonderful person. Tomorrow, if she does something that I don't like, Immediately my thoughts say, she's no good. But if my emotions have gone ahead with this wonderful person, emotions are not that agile, they cannot turn around so quickly, it's little sappy, it takes time. In the meantime you struggle because thought says, this is not okay, but emotion is still 
entangled. Now what do I do about this? Don't try to control your emotions or thoughts because the very nature of your mind is such that I don't want to think about this person means that's the only person I'm going to think about for the rest of my life. So, when compulsive thoughts and emotions come, first and foremost thing that you do is, you simply see them for what they are. You don't try to resist them. The moment you resist, they will multiply. In this mind, you don't have subtraction and division. You only have addition and multiplication. So, what you need to do, one thing is, just understand that thought and emotion are just a recycle of the data that is already there, something that you remember. It is just that memory is little smelly, it just keeps coming. You just have to see it like that, little distance from that. It is like you were jammed in a traffic jam, you were going to the airport, you got stuck in a traffic jam, how much anxiety and struggle you had, then somehow you got there and then you got into the airplane and you took off. From up there when you look down, how nice the traffic jam looks <laughs> Simply because there is a little distance, still the same traffic jam, but because there is a distance, suddenly there is nothing to it. Similarly with your thought and emotion, a little bit of practice to create a little distance from your physiological processes and your psychological processes come. But if you try to handle individual thought and emotion, they will multiply thousandfold. So how to build goodwill? I was doing a program for uh, one of the top where, you know, really one of the largest uh, multinational company in the world, top twenty-five executives, it's a two-day event. I had nine volunteers with me. Isha Foundation is a completely volunteer-run organization. And these nine volunteers were managing everything for the program and uh, on the second day, one of these executives asked me, Sadhguru, where do you get such people? Because they are always looking for attrition, you know. Where do you get such people? I said, you don't get them, you got to make them. How do you make them? I said, you have to make them fall in love with you. Oh, how do we do that? I said, first you must fall in love with them. Then they say, oh, they don't pay us for that. So that's all it is. So, <laughs> you cannot build goodwill, you have to exude goodwill. If you offer it to everybody, then it comes back to you in many ways. But you don't worry whether it comes back to you or not, this should be your way of living, this should be a way of being, that you naturally include everybody in everything that you are. Some will respond, some will not respond and it's fine, it's their choice. But as far as you're concerned, there's no choice. You have fallen in love with everybody. For them, they can choose still, but after some time they'll lose their choice, they'll have no choice. If you continue to be like this, you will see after some time they have no choice at all. Initially they act like they have a choice, but after a while they'll have no choice. So don't try to build goodwill. See, when I say fall in love with something, all I'm saying is, what you refer to as love is just a certain pleasantness of your emotion. Emotion is a very powerful thing. Though people talk all intellectual nonsense, still world is driven by human emotion. So emotion is a powerful tool. So if you can manage a steady sweetness of your emotion, you are in love with everything around you. If you are like this, people can't help it they'll fall. This is not a trick, this is a way of being. 
This is an intelligent way to exist because whether they fall in love with you or not, your life is very pleasant and sweet. Whether somebody loves you or not doesn't make a difference. It is just that you are loving that makes your life very pleasant. Say, I'm always stoned. Never touched a substance, but always stoned. You can judge me whichever way you want <laughs> Because one thing is, I'm stoned in such a way that I have not lost my judgment at all. And at the same time, whichever way you judge me, has absolutely no impact on me because I'm completely stoned. <laughs> Having said that, why this consumption of alcohol and drugs is growing the way it's growing in the world is, this is because the heavens have been collapsing. <laughs> yes. I was in Bangalore just uh, three, four weeks ago. There were over eight thousand people doing a two-day program with me. And just casually I asked, how many of you think you will go to heaven? Only five hands went up. <laughs> then I asked, are you all the hell people? <laughs> no, it's just that both heaven and hell have collapsed in people's minds. This is the first time in the history of humanity that this many people in the world can think for themselves. Otherwise, your priest, your mullah, your pandit or a book was thinking for you. The first time that so many people can think for themselves or they're thinking right, thinking wrong, there are many issues about that. But they're thinking right, thinking wrong, but they're thinking, they can't openly say, there's no goddamn hell or heaven, they're still fearful about it, but they're trying to make a little heaven for themselves here. So, hey, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so naturally, when they're not able to do it for themselves, out of their own intelligence, they will fall back on chemicals. This is another concept which has made its rounds in the world that something else should motivate you to do what you're doing. If what you're doing is significant enough, you don't need any other thing to motivate you. What you're doing is truly significant to life. Why do you need another motivation to make that happen? If… if you really understand and experience that what you're doing is truly important for every life around you, you don't need a motivation, life just goes on. See. Does your heart beat need a motivation to keep it going? I'm asking you. All the life processes is not asking for any motivation, isn't it? Monsoon's coming, any motivation? No, it's coming year after year because the natural process is going on. Simply like that, in you and me, life is on. What I'm telling you is, if you're doing something which is aligned with the fundamental life process of who you are, this can find a million expressions, it need not be just spiritual teaching. It can find a million expressions that what you're doing is aligned with your fundamental life process, then you will not need anything to motivate you. Simply, as a part of life, it will just happen. You should not be a motivated person. Generally, somebody… when we say somebody is motivated, it means they have an agenda of their own. Life has no agenda. It's for you to be a full-fledged life. A grasshopper is trying to be a full-fledged grasshopper, earthworm is trying to be a full-fledged earthworm, a bird is trying to be a full-fledged bird, a tree is trying to be a full-fledged tree. A human being should strive to become a full-fledged human being. These are all our businesses. But each one of us start creating our own agendas and doing all kinds of things. No, no. You're just a piece of life, don't take yourself too seriously. Because before you and me, countless number of people have come and gone. Hmm? Yes or no? Where are they? All those people. You think they were all idiots? 
they were all idiots and they died, is it? No, they were also like you, maybe they were also officers, maybe they were kings more than you, all kinds of things, all topsoil now. What you call as life is a brief sparkle. The only thing that you have to do is rise and sparkle as a full-fledged life. When something is needed around us, we will do that naturally because when you're doing wonderfully well, you will do what is needed, isn't it? When you're miserable, you will be motivated. Yes? Tell me, when you're very happy, have you looked at yourself? How nice and wonderful you are, you're willing to do anything for anybody, you bend backwards if necessary, yes or no? When you're little frustrated, Woo! <laughs> how difficult it is. So, don't teach your children to become motivated about something. These are all nonsense that's coming from the West, all those trashy self-help books. Motivate yourself, build confidence, believe in yourself. You believed in God and destroyed so much of this world. Now you believe in yourself, what will you do? <laughs> you just have to see, how this is alive to its fullest possible level right now. If it's fully alive, it will do everything that it can do, isn't it? What it cannot do, anyway it will not do. If you watch a bird in the morning, there are birds here, you know. So here if you see a bird, sir, little bird, in the morning, it's doing everything that it can do, isn't it? Hello? Everything that it can do, it will spare nothing. That's all you have to do everything that you can do. What you cannot do, perfectly okay. A worm cannot do what a bird does, a bird cannot do what an elephant does, an elephant cannot do what we do, yes or no? But we must be doing what we can do. What we cannot do, it doesn't matter. What we can do must happen. For this, all that's needed is, you must understand Life is a very brief sparkle, it's just poop, poop, poop and gone. Unless you're miserable, miserable people have a long life. Only they feel life is long. If you're very joyful, poof, it'll be gone before you know what's happening. Have you noticed a specific day, you're very happy, twenty-four hours, gone like that. Little miserable, twenty-four hours, feel like ten thousand years. Yes or no? So time is a very relative experience, you're alive just for a few little bit. This time don't be motivated by anything. All that you have to do is you must become a full-fledged life. How do I wake up in the morning and be motivated? What are you motivated about? Nothing, if you're alive you'll bounce out of your bed, isn't it? But now the way we eat, the way we breathe, the way we do things, and intoxicants and stuff, everything, generally the body wants to die. It doesn't want to be alive. Have you lost interest in what you are doing? Will you last long enough if you don't like your job? What must you improve? Sadhguru shares a conversation where he explains why you should love what you are doing. Check it out. If you don't love doing what you're doing, you shouldn't do it, always somebody will do it. Hello? Someone comes to me, <laughs> he's heading a, a multinational company, global CEO. He comes in a distressed state and says, Guru, I can't take this. They're putting so much pressure on me every day, can't take this. Then I look at him, raise my hands and say, may you be fired. Oh, Sudhguru, Sudhguru, what are you saying? I said, hey man, you're suffering so much. What is the point? At least if you're fired, you can walk on the beach, huh? <laughs> Maybe somebody else will do this job little more joyfully than you. You think you're spinning the planet or what? Hello? What is the hardship? Are you spinning the planet? Are you pushing it around the sun? Everything is free, isn't it? <laughs> Hello? Everything is free. All you have to do is, 
be a full-fledged life. Don't constipate yourself with too many ideas, philosophies, belief systems, stupid thoughts and emotions with which you get constipated and become less than who you are. No, you should not ever be less than what you can be, isn't it? You don't have to be as good as somebody else and you can never be because everybody is different. But you should not be less than what you can be. So you don't need motivation for this, you need aliveness. How much you do simply depends on how much time you invested on upgrading yourself. The problem with the world right now is, people are always trying to upgrade their activity. If you upgrade your activity without upgrading yourself, you are bound to break up somewhere. It's like you went on a Formula One track because you want to be on a fast track <laughs> and you went with your Maruti 800. Suppose you hit the right kind of speed, all the four wheels will go in four different directions. It won't hold up. If you want to be on that kind of speed and that kind of track, you must prepare the machine. Upgradation of this one is important. If you upgrade yourself, activity will simply happen. Uh, many people around me, <laughs> uh, you know, many times think I'm superhuman because of that activity that I perform. This is not about being superhuman. If you explore the possibilities of being human, if you explore the possibilities of the immensity of being human, you will realize you don't have to be a superhuman, being human itself is super. So you will not need any external drive or some other inspiration, the very process of life will do it. See, right now, if I tell you, or if you're not me, let's say your dean tells you from tomorrow all of you what kind of clothes you should wear, immediately there'll be protests in the college. If your dean goes further and says, everybody must eat only four idlis in the morning. If your dean tells you everybody should get up at five o'clock in the morning, let's say he put ten different rules like this, physical things to do. You will think he is trying to convert you into slaves and you will shout and scream for your freedom, isn't it? But look at yourself and see, right now, Somebody else, if they determine what should happen around you, you feel like a slave. But right now somebody else is determining what should happen within you. Is this not slavery? Somebody can decide whether you're happy or unhappy. Is this not slavery? Somebody can decide whether you will be a pleasant human being or an unpleasant human being. Is this not slavery? What happens within you, somebody else determines. This is the worst form of slavery, isn't it? This human being, life around you will not happen, will never happen hundred percent the way you want it. And it should not happen. Because if everything happens the way you want it, where do I go? <laughs> well, in the sense, whenever things don't work, there is a habit in lots of people, they will look up, uparwala. Isn't it? The whole world is looking up. And uh, now that you're a student, you're still a student, I believe about sixty, seventy percent is happening your way. When you get married, the percentage will get reversed <laughs> We don't know <clears throat> Well, we don't know whether which way it'll go. So if life around you will never happen hundred percent the way you want it and it should not. Unless you're living with machines, life will not happen and even those machines will freak on you, isn't it? There is only one thing you can be certain of right now, this is you know what is outward, what is inward. This one thing you're sure, isn't it? This is inward, this is outward. This is the only privilege you have. What is outward, what is inward, this is all you know. Just in case, someday if you get enlightened, you will lose that also. <laughs> yes, that's what happened to me. Now I don't know which is inward, which is outward, which is me, which is not me, that's why I'm all over the world. Because I don't know whether this is me or that is me. Can you see me right now, all of you? Can you see me?
Just point out where I am. Use your hands and point out. Can you see me? Oh, you got it wrong. You know I'm a mystic. You're getting it completely wrong. Now, this light is falling upon me, reflecting, going through your lenses, inverted image in your retina, you know the whole story, right? Where do you see me right now? Within yourself. Where have you seen the whole world? Within yourself. Have you ever experienced anything outside of yourself? Everything that ever happened to you, darkness and light happened within you, pain and pleasure happened within you, joy and misery happened within you. Have you ever experienced anything outside of yourself? No. So what I am asking you is, what happens within you, who should determine how it should happen? Hmm? What happens within you, who should determine how this should happen? Somebody else? Definitely you should determine what should happen within this, isn't it? So if you determine what's happening within this, your whole experience of life will be determined by you, nobody else but you, isn't it? The events around you may not be determined by you, but how your experience of life is on this planet is one hundred percent determined by you if you take charge of this. If you leave it loose, just about anybody will determine it. They were not consciously, they also like you by accident. <laughs> what is the large issue that you're talking about? It is just about what job to take, which girl to marry, that, that you know, it. where to go for vacation, <laughs> whether, whether to get married or not get married, you know. These are the things, isn't it? Right. These are not large issues, these are little things in your life. Yes, oh, is it just a small thing whom I get married to? I'm not saying it's a small thing, but as an issue, it's a small issue, little issue. As a consequence to your life, yes, it has many things, but this is something that human beings have done for millions of years. We have enough experience on these things, <laughs> isn't it? For a person who is constantly creating inner battles all the time, how will he deal with the bondages of life and how will he transcend that? There's no question. It doesn't arise in your life. So first thing is working towards to be a blissful human being. If that happens, the rest becomes very simple because a blissful human being, once your happiness is not at stake, anything that's needed you will do, isn't it? Right now you cannot do what's needed because always your happiness is at stake. We know that whatever job we take, whoever we marry, it is just the way we make out of it. Every experience of life, you can make it an enriching experience. Every experience in your life, you can make a curse out of it. See, there is nothing wrong in your job, whatever job you're doing. There's nothing wrong getting this job, there's nothing wrong, wrong in losing this job. There's nothing wrong in getting married, there's nothing wrong in getting divorced. There's nothing wrong in not getting married. There is nothing wrong in anything, there's nothing wrong in this or that. But it is just that you make misery out of it, that's wrong. If you do this, you make misery out of it. If you do that, you make misery out of it. That's what is wrong with you. You just address that one issue, everything will be settled. That's what we are looking at. How not to make misery out of everything. If this one thing is settled, everything is settled, isn't it? Yes? <laughs> that comes next. <laughs> If you don't even know how to be happy, don't have such goals as realization, they are very far away from you. See, you are just dismissing something very fundamental to your life with a stupid definition. Happiness is not just a state of mind, 
it is just the basis of the quality of life that you live here, isn't it? Is it such a small thing, happiness? There is no right thing to do in your life. There is no wrong thing to do in your life. If you know how not to make misery out of everything that you do, whatever you're doing is the right thing. If you're making misery out of everything that you do, everything that you do is the wrong thing. So that's the only issue you have to look at. <laughs> Others are all petty things. What does it matter? Which way you do it? Ultimately, the decision is still ours, since our mind is in control of our whole system. A conscious mind is a great thing to have, if we can just learn to use it to our advantage. Remember, living a happy and blissful life is just as easy as you think it is. You just have to teach your mind how to always choose it. Click on the video shown to see more from us. Then, share your thoughts in the comments section. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.